All right, so we've got our initial setup of the instrument idea in place. If we were to go to instruments, instruments new, we have our form and it look it's looking good. I, I copy and pasted this code, so I, I feel like I'm cheating and I don't want you guys to think I'm only gonna copy and paste code. So on the index path, I'll actually type this portion out just cause it's, I want you to see the real thing happen in real time as opposed to just uh, sugarcoating it. So. I'm in the old app here, probably should be in the new one. So let's do that. There we go. Let's go to our index page. And so far it does not look good. So let's honestly just delete everything and start from fresh. So we're gonna use our content for block here like we did on other pages, just so we can make use of that yield that's already in place. So we can add anything we want here, but I'm gonna just go with the flow. I might speed this up, but it won't be, it still will be me typing it. So keeping that in mind. All right, so that part's done and that should already render a new heading for us here, which looks cool. So let's go and do the primary grid that what I want to use. So I'm going to do instrument index grid padding top four. And here we're going to loop through all the instruments and it's plural because that is what it is on our actual controller. So it's instruments dot each do and then it pass an instrument. This could be anything. If you want to make it not such a long word, you can do it that way too. And just to reiterate, this is what we're grabbing right here. See how it's plural. And then on these views, it's singular. That's important to remember. So this gets all of them in this case and they're in descendant order, descending order. So we're gonna, in between those, go and do instrument, order light, link to, So right here is part of the carrier wave gem, which we can link to an actual image path, which is basically we're targeting our instrument, finding the image on it, but then grabbing the URL, which is a helper provided by carrier wave. And within that, we can grab the size we want. So in this case, I just want the thumb size. We added thumb and default in the very beginning. So I'm gonna just stick with thumb for now on the front end. Uh, we'll use our default one when we hit the show page. So that's um, gonna be a larger image. All right, so there we're checking to see if a user actually inputs a, a condition. Um, it's not required, but it's funny because it's a select field anyway, so by default, something's gonna have to be there. Um, I don't know, I just coded it that way. I probably was up late not thinking about that, but that's something they take into account because it, a select field, you almost have to always select something. But anyway. So out of the box, Rails has a sweet helper called number to currency that just basically reformats any kind of a number based input here into a currency model and adds the, the appropriate dollar sign or whatever environment you're in to that mix. So it's a neat helper, uh, definitely worth looking into if you're doing this and thinking about even translation and stuff like that. So next we will check if the user is the instrument author. And I actually created a helper off of this one because it was a lot to, to type in a view and I just wanted to subtract it from there. 
So we pass in the instrument in this case. And then if this thing is valid, it would output controls to either edit or delete the actual instrument. So link to edit. All right, so deleting something looks like that. You just basically call a method on the actual instrument instead of any kind of destroy path or something. And then you can pop up a dialog that says, are you sure, just to confirm. It's kind of just a good UX pattern to follow. Um, so let's add this helper next. I believe I added it to our actual instrument helper in the helpers folder. So let's go up there, helpers instruments helper. So here's a module that is that helper. And in here, you can just define stuff that's, it's not necessarily namespace to the instrument, but it is a good organized method to keep it in here just because it deals with the instrument in this case. So basically just defining a function that passes in the instrument in the end. So we're going to check if the user is signed in. And the current user the ID is equal to the instrument user ID. So that's why we added the user ID to the instrument table a while back. It was a migration here where we added that. So we're comparing those. So they, they should match if it's the same user. So if so, that user can edit this stuff. So that's what's going on there. And this is just a more convenient way to call that. Okay, so that I think wraps up the front end of the index view. Let me double check though. I think we need to close a div. Oh, you know what? I forgot to add a div called instrument thumb right here. That needs to go here. It wraps around that condition. We actually need to remove this div and put it down at the bottom right here. Cause I want that, it's got a border around it. Whoops. Ugh. It's got a border on it and I want it to append around everything. So I think, looks like I got something wrong. Title links to title. Oops, it should be instrument. There we go. So this is what it ends up looking like. It is on a CSS grid, so it's pretty responsive out of the box. And that's kind of what our CSS that I added at the very beginning is responsible for. So on our application style sheet, I just put it there. It could go anywhere though. Um, we're getting this class, which is what we just wrote. And then inside that, all this stuff is going on. So just some tweaks that here and there, obviously you could add plenty of this as functional styles, but I kind of just took it and ran with it at this point. So I'm not really concerned about the CSS, but yeah, I think that wraps up the index path. We can probably move on to the show path next and then maybe move on to later creating the actual cart and everything involved in that process in a new video. Let's go ahead and fix up the show page and then we'll finish out from there. So I'll do content for again. And a neat thing here is you can add a yield statement to a class as well. So I didn't say this in the beginning, but I actually have a yield statement in our body on the application layout. So let's go there again, I'll show you right here. So you can just append any type of class based on the view you're on. So in this case, I wanted a, a different background color on this page. So I'm gonna just hook into the body and just pass that class through since we have it in our functional styles right here. We go to it, background light. That should hook in and do, do what we need. So, Handy little thing. So on our show page, we have a different looking way to access the instrument. And that's simply because on our controller, we're accessing it differently in this case. So on our instruments controller, there's no actual definition defined here, but by default, since we're doing this before action where it sets instrument for these actions, show is one of those. It's actually coming down here and setting that instrument, 
which is more or less finding the one that we're associating with and it finds the parameter ID and the URL. So that's actually, uh, let's see, if we go through to this, it's one in this case. So that's how that's working. We don't have anything here yet, but I'm working on that. So let's go ahead and save that down. If I just were to refresh that, we'll see PRS guitar title there. So that's cool. All right, so continuing on. Okay, so with that done, we have our markup for the show page. It's gonna show pretty much everything we had on the index path, but a little bit more detail. So we have actual specs coming through, um, which is just stuff that's come through from the form when the instrument is created. We also have a button to add to cart, of which we'll work on a little bit later as we start to integrate the shopping cart aspect of the app. So, so far it's looking good. We have finally rounding out the instrument author helper more or less checking to see if that user signed in and it belongs to that person who authored it and if it does they can go ahead and edit that instrument as they see fit so hopefully this comes through and we have everything we need so we do need some extra styles that i don't have concluded right now so i'm going to go back to my default app or my demo app and just add those accordingly mainly just a few just to fix the button here and then make this image go full width depending on whatever size it is. So let's go to our actual app here, assets, instruments, we'll just paste that in. There we go. So now that button's full width, this image, it's a little blurry, it's probably not the right way to go about that, but I'm just gonna run with it. And one thing I did notice is the title itself doesn't quite looking like what should. So let's fix that. We don't have the classes we need on it. So it's title is two. That should be bigger now. Brand isn't quite showing. Oh, no wonder. I'm not outputting that. So these need to actually have the equal sign after. So don't forget that. So this should show up now. There we go. So it's saying here's the brand, here's the model, here's the condition. Uh, here's the actual title we provided and it's sold by it would be I guess me in this case but it's not saying my actual name what's up with that brand model and limited currency oh same thing don't forget the equal sign there we go and our table down here could probably benefit of being like a full width table yeah something like that could work um, I might not deal with that though. I think what I ended up doing is adding the table inside the content area, which there's a div somewhere down here that I forgot right here, content border right. Yeah, so this div needs to follow all this stuff. Yeah, it looks like I had a trailing div I shouldn't have. There we go. Oh, I did. Let's see, is that gonna fix it? 
it did cool so we've got our description plus our specs and everything in its own little container here we could even add maybe the same kind of heading under the description uh, like this just so it's a little more uniform so that would go here and we can call it description not really necessary but why not and we don't need the padding top there we go and we got our edit button here since i created this one we can go back and edit it and it all should be square just do like custom see if it works update oh, doesn't look like it's working must be an integer so that's an issue it needs to be no decimal there so i could probably go ahead and enter model I have that validation going on. Probably just do away with that for the sake of easiness uh, on our price. Let's probably get rid of this. That's probably not a good thing to do, but you should definitely do more validation than that. But that's just an easier way to add any kind of string we want here. Okay, so with that done, we've got our show page, our index page looking good. Up next, we'll probably need to, maybe I'll update the layout file to include that cell link now. Let's see, so this could have new instrument path. Cool, so there we go. That was a quick fix. Um, yeah, so up next we can start to work on the cart and then maybe think about some nice techniques to use when you wanna seed a database as we go. So I'll probably do that at the very end just so we have everything in place and I could show you how that works. So when you download the example app, you can just already have data to go. I will see you in the next video.